Hello and welcome to part two of our reading of the book of Tobit. If this is your first time joining us, I will place a link to part one down in the description box below. I would highly suggest starting with part one as there is a backstory to the book of Tobit and what was historically happening with the Assyrian conquest of Israel. As always, this is a recap of what we read through on the Dark Outpost yesterday. If you would like to join the Dark Outpost platform, there is a link down in the description box below. We go live on Tuesdays from 1 to 3 p.m. East Coast time. Because we are live, usually there is a phone number available for you to call in if you would like to join into the conversation regarding the book that we are reading through. With all that being said, let's get started with the book of Tobit. We are going to be starting with chapter 2. Now when I was come home again, and my wife Anna was restored unto me with my son Tobias, in the feast of Pentecost, which is the holy feast of the seven weeks, there was a good dinner prepared me, in which I sat down to eat. And when I saw abundance of meat, I said to my son, Go and bring what poor man soever thou shalt find out of our brethren, who is mindful of the Lord, and lo, I tarry for thee. But he came again and said, Father, one of our nations is strangled and is cast out in the marketplace. Then before I had tasted any meat, I started up and took him up into a room and told the going down of the sun. Then I returned and washed myself and ate meat in heaviness, turned into mourning, and all your mirth into lamentations. Therefore I wept. And after the going down of the sun, I went and made a grave and buried him. So just a brief reminder, guys, that Tobit and his wife Anna and his son Tobias are living in exile in Nineveh. And Tobit has kept the duty going to continue to bury his brothers, his Hebrew brothers and sisters, in the traditional way of burying the Hebrew people. This was a bit of an issue in the first chapter with the emperor, but now we've got a new, a new reign, a new king in this area who is friends with Tobit's nephew. And so he's kind of been excused of his troubles from chapter one because of his connections to the king. It's all about who you know in this world. So therefore, that's why this is such an important note that his son found a person who, from their nation, from the Hebrew people, who is who had passed. And so therefore, he came to get his father to carry out the proper burials. So this brings us to verse 2-8. But my neighbors mocked me and said, This man is not yet afraid to be put to death for this matter, who fled away, and yet, lo, he burieth the dead again. So again, as I said, he gotten into a little bit of trouble with the prior king. Now he has some good standing with the current king because of his nephew. But there is also that looming stress that they're going to get in trouble for continuing to practice their Hebrew traditions. The same night also I returned from the burial and slept by the wall of my courtyard, being polluted and my face was uncovered. And I knew not there were sparrows in the wall, and mine eyes being open and sparrows muted warm, dug into mine eyes, and whiteness came into mine eyes and went to the physicians, which they helped me not. Moreover, Arcadius did nourish me until I went into Elimaeus. And my wife, Anna, did take women's work to do. <laughs> That's funny. And my wife, Anna, did take women's work to do. So I imagine housework. And when she had sent them home to the owners, they paid her wages and gave her also besides a kid. Okay, so she's obviously doing work for people and household services. And when it was in my house and began to cry, I said unto her, From whence is this kid? Is it not stolen? Render it to the owners, for it is not lawful to meet anything that is stolen. And a kid obviously means a baby lamb. But she replied unto me, It was given for a gift more than the wages. How bet I did not believe her, but bade her render it to the owners. And I was abashed with her, but she replied unto me, Where are thine alms and thy righteous deed? Behold, thou and all thy works are known. And this brings us into chapter 3. 
Then I, being grieved, did weep in my sorrows, prayed, saying, O Lord, thou art just, and all thy works and all thy ways are mercy and truth, and thou judgest truly and justly forever. Remember me, look on me, punish me not for my sins and ignorance, and the sins of my father who have sinned before thee. For they obeyed not thy commandments. Wherefore thou hast delivered us for a spoil and unto captivity, and unto death, and for a proverb of reproach to all the nations among whom we are dispersed. So once again, this is when all of the tribes of Israel, the ten tribes of Israel went missing. We covered this last week. This was when the Assyrians conquered it. So he's talking about this. He's talking about how all of the tribal people of the Hebrew nation, Israel, and of course, eventually the land of Judah as well, the 12 tribes of Israel were shot out throughout the world because, again, of the Assyrian conquest. So verse 3, 5, And now thy judgments are many and true. Deal with me according to my sins and my fathers, because we have not kept thy commandments, neither have walked in truth before thee. Now therefore deal with me as seeth best unto thee, and command my spirit to be taken from me, that I may be dissolved and become earth. For it is profitable for me to die rather than to live, because I have heard false reproaches and have much sorrow. Command therefore that I may now be delivered out of this distress and go into the everlasting place. Turn not thy face away from me. So he's basically praying to be taken off the earth plane right now because of everything that has happened in this Assyrian conflict. Quest, I can't imagine how much trauma and PTSD there would have been there. It came to pass the same day that in Ikabatane, a city of Media, Sarah, the daughter of Ragul, was also reproached by her father's maids. Because that she had been married to seven husbands, whom Asmodeus, the evil spirit, had killed before they had lain with her. Dost thou not know, they said, that thou hast strangled thine husbands? Thou hast already seven husbands, neither wast thou named after any of them. So basically now we're skipping to another city in Media. And this is Sarah. So Sarah, we I think we kind of spoke about this in last week's episode. She has basically been engaged seven times, but her husbands have all or fiancés have all passed away before she was able to consummate the marriage, which consummation of the marriage was extremely important back then because that's what really made the marriage. Now, I kind of laugh at this because if there was a woman today who had seven fiancés leave the earth plane before the marriage, she probably would be on Dateline or the show Snapped. But here we're going to learn that this was kind of paranormal. This wasn't her doing it. I don't know if that would be a good defense today, though. You couldn't really say, like, oh, you know, the spirits did it. Wherefore dost thou beat us for them? If they be dead, go thy ways after them. Let us never see of thee either son or daughter. And when she heard these things, she was very sorrowful, so that she thought to have strangled herself. And she said, I am the only daughter of my father, and if I do this, it shall be a reproach unto him, and I shall bring his old age with sorrow unto his grave. So both Sarah and Tobit are having like come to Jesus moments in the sense that they're walking out on the ledge. They're kind of ready to go because so much bad things have happened to them. Then she prayed toward the window and said, Blessed art thou, O Lord my God, and thine holy and glorious name is blessed and honorable forever. Let all thy works praise thee forever. And now, O Lord, I set mine eyes and my face toward thee. And say, Take me out of the earth, that I may hear no more of that reproach. Thou knowest, Lord, that I am pure from all sin with man. So she's never been with a man. And that I never polluted my name, nor the name of my father, in the land of my captivity. I am the only daughter of my father, neither hath he any children to be his heir. Neither any near kinsman, nor any son of his alive, to whom I may keep myself for a wife. My seven husbands are already dead, and why should I live? But if it please not thee that I should die, command some regard to be had of me, and pity taken of me, that I hear no more reproach. So the prayers of them both were heard before the majesty of the great Lord. And Raphael was sent to heal them both, that is, to scale away the whiteness of Tobit's eyes, and to give Sarah the daughter of Ragul for a wife to Tobias the son of Tobit. And to bid Asmodeus the evil spirit, because she belonged to Dobus by right of inheritance. The selfsame time came to Tobit's home and entered into his house, and Sarah, the daughter of Rag 
Gul came down from her upper chambers. This brings us now to chapter four. In that day, Tobit remembered the money which he had committed to Gebel in Regs in Media, and said to himself, I have wished for death. Wherefore do I not call for my son Tobias, that I may signify to him of money before I die? And when he called to him, he said, My son, when I am dead, bury me, and, dis and despise not thy mother, but honor her all the days of thy life, and do that which shall please her and grieve her not. Remember, my son, that she saw many dangers for thee when thou wast in her womb. And when she is dead, bury her by me in one grave. My son, be mindful of the Lord our God all thy days, and let not thy will be set to sin or to transgress his commandments. Do uprightly all thy life long, and follow not the ways of righteousness. For if thou deal truly, thy doing shall pros purposely succeed to thee and to all them that live justly. Give alms to thy substance, and when thou givest alms, let not thine eyes be envious, neither turn thy face from any poor, and the face of God shall not be turned away from thee. If thou hast abundance, give alms accordingly. If thou have but a little, be not afraid to, giving, to give according to that little. For thou layest up a good treasure for thyself against the day of necessity, because that alms do deliver from death, and suffereth not to come into darkness. For alms is a good gift unto all that give it unto the sight of the Most High. Beware of all whoredom, my son, and chiefly take a wife of the seed of thy fathers, and take not a strange woman to wife, which is not of thy father's tribe, for we are all children of prophets. Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Beware of whoredom, my son. <laughs> Remember, my son, that our fathers from the beginning, even that they all married wives of their own kindred, and were blessed, and their children and their seed shall inherit the land. Now therefore, my son, love thy brethren, and despise not in thy heart thy brethren, the sons and daughters of thy people, and not taking, for in pride is destruction, and much trouble, and in the lewdness of decay, and great want, for lewdness is the mother of famine, let not the wages of any man, which hath wrought for thee, tarry with thee, but give it to him to hand, for if thou serveth God, he will also repay thee. Be circumspect, my son, in all things thou doest, and be wise in all thy conversation. Do that to no man which thou hatest. Drink not wine to make thee drunken, neither let drunkenness go with thee into thy journey. Give of thy bread to the hungry, and of thy garnets to them that are naked. And according to thy abundance give alms, and let not thine eyes be envious when thou givest alms. Pour out thy bread on the burial of the just, but give nothing to the wicked. Ask counsel for all that are wise, and despise not any counsel that is profitable. Bless the Lord thy God alway, and desire of him that they that thy ways may be directed, and that all thy paths and counsels may prosper. For every nation hath not counsel. But the Lord himself giveth all good things, and he humbleth whom he will, as he will. Now therefore, my son, remember my commandments, neither let them be put out of thy mind. And now I signify this to thee, that committed ten talents to Gabel, the son of Gabrius, at Rages and Media. And fear not, my son, that we are made poor, for thou hast much wealth. If thou fear God, and depart from all sins, and do that which is pleasing in his sight. So now Tobias is heading out on a journey. We know that God is answering the prayers of both Tobit and Sarah. He's going to make Tobit blind. And obviously Sarah is going to meet her actual husband of inheritance, the her soulmate, basically, in we know it's going to be in Tobias. To, so this brings us to chapter 5. Tobias then answered and said, Father, I will do all things which thou hast commanded me. But how can I receive the money, seeing I know him not? And he gave him the handwriting and said unto him, Seek thee a man which may go with thee whilst yet I live, and I will give him wages and go and receive money. Therefore, when he went to seek a man, he found Raphael that was an angel. But he knew not, and said unto him, Canest thou go with me to Rages, and knowest thou those places well? To whom the angel said, I will go with thee, and I know the way well, for I have logged with our brother Gabel. So this is the archangel Raphael that is now coming 
into human form to help the situation. And we've talked about this before. Beings of the light can create. And I do believe that angels can take human form with need be. So this brings us to 5, 7. And Tobias said unto him, Tarry for me till I tell my father. And then he said to him, Go and tarry not. So we went in and said to his father, Behold, I have found one which will go with me. Then he said, Call him unto me, that I may know of what tribe he is, and whether he be a trusty man to go with thee. And so he called to him, and he came in, and they saluted each other. Then Tobit said unto him, Brother, show me of what tribe and family thou art. To whom he said, Dost thou seek for a tribe or family, or a hired man to go with thy son? Then Tobit said unto him, I would know, brother, thy kindred and name. And they said, I am Azarias, the son of Ananias the great of thy brethren. So this is... If y'all remember from last week, this was one of the reasons why some people claim that this book is heresy because Raphael lies to Tobit. But I don't think that that necessarily makes this heretical because we know that angels don't want to scare people. So I don't have a problem with him like making up a lineage for the human form that he's in in order to ease Tobit's nerves on the journey that he is about to embark on with his son Tobias. So that brings us to 5.13. Then Tobit said, Thou art welcome, brother. Be not now angry with me, because I have inquired to know thy tribe and thy family. For thou art my brother of an honest and good stock. For I know Ananias and Jonathan, son of the great Samias, as we went together to Jerusalem to worship and offer the firstborn and the tenths of the fruit. And they were not seduced with error of thy brethren. My brother, thou art of good stock. But tell me, what wages shall I give thee? Wilt thou a drench a day and things necessary as to mine my own son? Like, what do I got to pay you to take care of my son? Ye, moreover, if ye return, I will add something to thy wages. And so they were well pleased. Then he said to Tobias, prepare thyself for the journey, and God send you a good journey. And when his son had prepared all things for the journey, his father said, Go thou with this man and God, which dwelleth in heaven, and prosper your journey, and the angel of God keep you company. So they went forth both, and the young man's dog with them. But Anna his mother wept, and said to Tobit, Why hast thou sent away your son, if he is not the staff of our hand, and going in and out before us? Be not greedy to add money to money, but let it be refused in respect for your child." For that which the Lord hath given us to live with doth suffice us. Then said Tobit to her, Take no care, my sister. He shall return in safety, and thine eyes shall see him. For the good angel will keep him company, and his journey shall be prosperous, and he shall return safe. So it's interesting. Now, angel here is not capitalized, so I don't know if he's referring to Raphael as an angel as in a pet name, or if he actually knows that it's an angel. So this brings us to 522, then she made an end of weeping. This brings us now to chapter 6. And they went on their journey. They came in the evening to the river Tigris, and they lodged there. And when the young man went down to wash himself, a fish leaped out of the river and, and would have devoured him. Then the angel said unto him, Take the fish. And the young man laid hold of the fish and drew it to the land. To whom the angel said, Open the fish, take the heart and the liver and the gall, and put it up safely. So the young man did as the angel commanded him, and when they had roasted the fish, they did eat it. Then they both went on their way till they drew near Ecbatane. Then the young man said to the angel, Brother Azarias, to what use is the heart and the liver and the gall of the fish? And he said unto him, Touching the heart and the liver, if a devil or an evil spirit trouble any, we must make smoke thereof before the man or the woman, and the party shall be no more vexed. As for the gall, it is good to anoint a man that hath whiteness in his eyes, and he shall be healed. Which is basically what happened to his father Tobit. He went blind, right? And when they were come near to Rages, the angel said to the younger man, Brother, to the day we shall lodge with Ragul, who is thy cousin. He also hath only one daughter named Sarah. I will speak for her, that she may given, be given thee for a wife. For if he doth write of her appearance seeing thou art only her kindred 
and the maid is fair and wise. Now therefore hear me, and I will speak to her father. And when we return to Regus, we will celebrate the marriage. For I know that Ragul cannot marry her to another according to the law of Moses. But he shall be guilty of death, because the right of the inheritance doth rather appertain to thee than any other. Then the young man answered the angels, I have heard, brother Azarias, that this maid hath been given to seven men who all died in the marriage chamber. So she's got a bit of a reputation, right? Like I said, this is like dateline. And now I am the only son of my father, and I am afraid, at least if I go in unto her, I die, as the others before, for a wicked spirit loveth her, which hurteth no body, but those which come unto her. Wherefore I also fear lest I die and bring my father and mother's life because of me to the grave with sorrow, for they have no other son to bury them. I'd be kind of afraid too if I was supposed to marry someone that had that kind of a reputation with their past people. Then the angel said unto him, Dost thou not remember the precepts which thy father gave thee, that thou shouldest marry a wife of thine own kindred? Wherefore hear me, O my brother, for she shall be given to thee a wife, and to make thou no reckoning of the evil spirit, for this same night shall she be given to thee in marriage. And when thou shalt come into the marriage chamber, thou shalt take the ashes of perfume, and shalt lay upon them some of the heart of the liver and fish, and shall make a smoke of it. And the devil shall smell it and flee away, and never come again any more. But when thou shalt come to her, rise up both of you, and pray to God, which is merciful, who will have pity on you and save you. Fear not, for she is appointed unto thee from the beginning, and thou shalt preserve her, and she shall go with thee. Moreover, I suppose that she shall bear thee children. Now when Tobias had heard these things, he loved her, and his heart was affectionately joined to her. So this brings us to chapter 7. And when they were come to Akbatane, they came to the house of Ragul and Sarah met them. And after they had saluted one another, she brought them into the house. Then said Ragul to Edna his wife, How like is this young man to Tobit my cousin? And Ragul asked them, From whence are you, brethren? To whom they said, We are the sons of Nephtalim, which are the captives of Nineveh. And he said to them, Do you know Tobit, our kinsman? And they said, We know him. Then he said, Is he in good health? And they said, He is both alive and in good health. And Tobias said, He is my father. Then Ragul leaped up and kissed him and wept, and blessed him and said unto him, Thou art the son of an honest and good man. But when he had heard that Tobit was blind, he was sorrowful and wept. And likewise Edna his wife and Sarah his daughter wept. Moreover, they entertained them cheerfully, and after that they had killed a ram of the flock. They set store of meat on the table. Then said to Tobias and Raphael, Brother Azarias, speak of those things which thou didst talk in the way, and let this business be dispatched. So he communicated the matter with Ragul, and Ragul said to Tobias, Eat and drink and make merry. For it is meet that thou shouldest marry my daughter. Nevertheless, I will declare unto thee the truth. So at least Tobias and Sarah aren't first cousins. It sounds like they're second cousins. So um, <laughs> I guess that's a little better than marrying your first cousin, which we've seen in many of these old books. I have given my daughter into marriage to seven men who died the night that they came into on her. Nevertheless, for the present to be married. But Tobias said, I will eat nothing here till we agree and swear to one another. And Ragul said, Then take her from henceforth to the manor, for thou art her cousin, and she is thine. And the merciful God give you good success in all things. And then he called his daughter Sarah, and she came to her father, and he took her by hand, and gave her to be wife to Tobias, saying, Behold, take her after the law of Moses, and lead her away to thy father, and he blessed them. And called Edna his wife, and took paper, and did write an instruction of covenants, and sealed it. Then they began to eat. After Ragul called his wife Edna, and said unto her, Sister, prepare another chamber, and bring her thither. Which when she had done as he had bidden her, she brought her thither, and she wept. And she received the tears of her daughters, and said unto her, Be of good comfort, my daughter. The Lord of heaven and earth give thee joy in thy sorrow. Be of good comfort, my daughter. I mean, we joked earlier about a woman having seven men that she was supposed to marry that had all passed away. And in this story, it's because there's a demon that's like, 
attached to her is what I gather. But literally in modern times, this would have been like a forensic files, you know, a snapped episode, a dateline of like a black widow having all these men behind her. But I can't understand, again, Tobias's hesitation, even though he knows that she is his kinsman and therefore it is his duty to marry her, to keep the bloodline pure of this tribe of Neftali, but literally her reputation did precede her because of how many people she's left in her tracks. So this brings us to chapter eight. And when they had supped, so after they ate dinner, they brought Tobias in unto her, and he went and he remembered the words of Raphael and took the ashes of the perfumes and cut the heart and the liver of the fish thereupon and make a smoke therewith. The witch smell when the evil spirits had smelled, he fled into the utmost parts of Egypt and the angels bound him. So this was kind of like a modern day concoction to get rid of evil evil entities, which I know a lot of modern day Christians would have an issue with this, but this is common here down here in the South as well. Like there's concoctions people put in their houses to rid themselves of evil spirits. It's like when we smudge, you know, I know I'm sure everybody listening knows someone who smudges their house or you maybe smudge your house. Um, for a lot of cultures here in the South that have a lot of influence from African um, religions, they'll put like red clay at the door so anybody that means to harm you or doesn't have good intentions for you literally can't enter your home. We have a mask here in our where I'm recording in my living room. It's a mask from India and it's this like face, this very um, horrific face that they put outside of their houses on India to scare away demons. We didn't put it on the outside of our house because we live in Atlanta, Georgia, and it might have been very strange to our neighbors, but we do have it on the inside of our house. So this is this is like normal stuff for old customs and, and still common modern customs as well to do these things to try to kind of exercise the space around you from any any spirits or things that have ill intention for you. So this brings us to 8-4. And after they were both shut in together, Tobias rose out of the bed and said, Sister, arise and let us pray that God would have pity on us. And then began Tobias to say, Blessed out there, O God, our Father, and blessed is thy holy and glorious name forever. Let the heavens bless thee and all thy creatures. Thou madest Adam and gave him Eve his wife for a helper and stay and then came mankind thou hast said it is not good that a man should be alone let us make unto him an aid like unto himself and now o lord i will take not this my sister for lust but uprightly therefore mercifully ordain that we may become aged together and she said with him amen and so they slept both that night and ragul arose and went and made a grave Oh, okay, so her dad is doubting that Tobias is, is going to survive the night because her father went and just went ahead and made a grave. They say you, uh, the way you can predict the future is by the past, so I guess he was definitely expecting Tobias not to, not to survive. Saying, I fear least he also be dead. But when Ragul came into his house, he said unto his wife Edna, Send one of the maids and let her see whether he be alive. If he not... Then we may bury him and no man know it. So basically they're going to help her hide the body <laughs> if he didn't survive. So the maid opened the door and went in and found them both asleep and came forth and told him that he was alive. Then Ragul praised God and said, O oh God, thou art worthy to be praised with all pure and holy praise. Therefore let thy saints praise thee with all thy creatures and let all thine angels and thy elect priest thee forever. Thou art to be praised, for thou hast made me joyful, and that has not come to me which I suspected. But thou hast dealt with us according to thy great mercy. Thou art to be praised, because thou had had mercy of two that were the only begotten children of their fathers. Grant them mercy, O Lord, and finish their life in health with joy and mercy. Then Ragul made his servants to fill the grave, and he kept the wedding feast fourteen days. For before the days of marriage were finished, Ragul had said unto him by an oath that he should not depart till the fourteenth day of marriage were expired. And then he should take the half of his goods and go in safety to his father and should have the rest when I and my wife be dead. This brings us to chapter 9, which is a very short chapter. 
Then Tobias called Raphael and said unto him, Brother Azarias, take with thee a servant and two camels and go to the rag of Media to Gebel and bring me the money and bring me to the wedding. For Ragel has sworn that I shall not depart, but my father counted the days, even if I tarry long, he will be very sorry. So Raphael went out and lodged with Gabel and gave him the handwriting, whom brought forth bags which were sealed up and gave them to him. And early in the morning they went forth both together and came to the wedding, and Tobias blessed his wife. So basically, Tobit is expecting them back at a certain time, but his cousin Ragul is keeping them longer because he doesn't know if Tobias is going to perish by the curse of his daughter. So Tobias, the son, wants to let Tobit, the father, know he's okay and he's coming back henceforth while why uh, Gabriel, or excuse me, why Raphael is being sent to carry the message. So this brings us to chapter 10. Now Tobit, his father, counted every day. When the days of the journey were expired, they came not. When, to when Tobit said, Are they detained, or is Gabel dead? Is there no man to give him the money? Therefore he was very sorry. Then his wife said unto him, My son is dead, seeing he stayeth long. And she began to well, and he said, No, I care for nothing, my son, since I have let thee go in the light of thine eyes. To whom Tobit said, Hold thy peace, and take no care, for he is safe. So mom's freaking out. Tobit is like, no, it's cool. I just know it's cool. But she said, hold thy peace and deceive me not. My son is dead. And she went out every day into the way which they went and did not eat no meat on the daytime and ceased not whole nights to bewail her son Tobias until the 14 days of the wedding were expired, which Ragul had sworn he should spend there. Then Tobias said to Ragul, let me go for my father and my mother look no more to see me. But his father-in-law said unto him, Tarry with me, and I will send thy father, and they shall declare unto him how things go with thee. But Tobias said, No, but let me go to my father. Then Ragul arose and gave him Sarah his wife and half of his goods, servants, cattle, and money. And he blessed them, and, they, and sent them away, saying, The God of heaven give you prosperous journey, my children. And he said to his daughter, Honor thy father and thy mother-in-law, which are now thy parents. And I may hear good report of thee. And he kissed her. And now also said to Tobias, The Lord of heaven restore thee, my dear brother, and grant that I may see thy children of my daughter, Sarah, before I die. And I may rejoice before the Lord. Behold, I commit my daughter unto thee of special trust, where do not entreat her evil. And this brings us to chapter 11. After these things, Tobias went his way, praising God that he had given him a prosperous journey and blessed Ragul and Edna his wife and went on his way till they drew near unto Nineveh. Then Raphael said to Tobias, Thou knowest, brother, thou didst leave thy father. Let us haste before thy wife and prepare the house and take in thine hand the gall of a fish. So they went their way and the dog went after them. Now Anna sat looking towards the way for her son. And when she espied him coming, she said to his father, Behold, thy son cometh, and the man that went with him. Then said Raphael, I know Tobias that thy father will open his eyes. There, he's going to get a sight back, basically. Therefore anoint thou his eyes with the gall, and being pricked therewith, he shall rub, and the whiteness shall fall away, and he shall see. It's kind of like... Jesus healing the blind in the New Testament. And we talked about this with the Gospel of the Holy Twelve as well, where there was a, or no, sorry, it wasn't the Gospel of the Holy Twelve. It was the Acts of Philip, where Philip, when the other band or had a, one of the other band or heretical books of the Bible, Philip also is able to heal the blind because he taught, was taught how to do it by Jesus. It sounds like this is a very common tactic used to heal the blind. Then Anna ran forth and fell upon her neck of her son and said unto him, Seeing I have seen thee, my son, from henceforth I am content to die. And they wept. Tobit went forth towards the door and stumbled, but his son ran unto him. And he took hold of his father, and he strayed the gall of his father's eyes, saying, Be of good hope, my father. And when his father's eyes began to smart, he rubbed them. And the witness piled away from the corners of his eyes, and when he saw his son, he fell upon his neck. And he wept and said, Blessed out there, O God, 
And blessed is thy name forever, and blessed are all thine holy angels, for thou hast scourged and hast taken pity on me. For behold, I see my son Tobias. And he, his son went in rejoicing and told his father the great things that had happened to him in Media. When Tobit went out to meet his daughter-in-law at the gate of Nineveh, rejoicing and praising God, and they which saw him go marveled because he had received his sight. But Tobias gave thanks before them because God had mercy on him. And when he came near to Sarah, his daughter-in-law, he blessed her, saying, Thou art welcome, daughter. God be blessed, which hath brought thee unto us. And blessed be thy father and thy mother. And there was joy among all of his brethren, which were at Nineveh. And Arcadius Naspius, his brother's son, came. And Tobias's wedding was kept seven days with great joy. And this brings us to chapter 12. Then Tobit called his son Tobias and said unto him, My son, see the man have his wages, which went with thee, and thou must give him more. And Tobias said unto him, O father, it is no harm to me to give him half of those things which I have brought. For he hath brought me again to thee in safety, and made whole my wife, and brought me the money, and likewise healed thee. The old man said, It is due unto him. So he called the angel and said unto him, Take half of all that ye have brought and go away in safety. And he took them both apart and said unto them, Blessed God, praise him and magnify him and praise him for the things which he hath done unto you in the sight of all that live. It is good to praise God and exalt his name and honorably to shew forth the works of God. Therefore be not slack to praise him. It is good to keep close the secret of a king but it is honorable to reveal the works of God. Do that which is good, and no evil shall touch you. Prayer is good with fasting and alms and righteousness. A little with righteousness is better than much with unrighteousness. It is better to give alms than to lay up gold. For alms doth deliver the dead, and shall purge away all sin. Those that exercise alms and righteousness shall be filled with life. But they that sin are enemies to their own life. Surely I will keep close nothing from you, for I said it was good to keep close the secrets of a king, but that it was honorable to reveal the works of God. Now therefore, when thou dost pray, and Sarah thy daughter-in-law, I did bring the remembrance of your prayer before the Holy One. And when thou didst bury the dead, I was there likewise. And when thou dost not delay to rise up and leave thy dinner, to go and cover the dead, thy good deed was not hid from me, but I was with thee. And now God hath sent me to heal thee, and Sarah thy daughter-in-law. I am Raphael, one of the seven holy angels, which is present to the prayer of the saints, and which go in and out before the glory of the Holy One. So this is it, guys. This verse, twelve fifteen. I am Raphael, one of the seven holy angels, which present the prayer of the saints, and which go in and out before the glory of the Holy One. One, this is the crux of this book and why we read this book before moving forward with other books. This is where it blatantly says that there are seven archangels. Again, in most of the Christian denominations today, we're not taught about the seven archangels. We're taught about Michael and basically Gabriel, and that's like it. So now we know there's Michael, Gabriel, Joel, which we read about in the Apocalypse of Abraham, and now Raphael. So now we have four of them. So there are going to be three more angels that we are hopefully going to meet in some of these banned books. And it's no wonder that they, they banned these books that gave us this type of information. How much more powerful are we when we know that there is seven archangels and not just one or two? And then they were both troubled and fell upon their faces, for they feared. But he said unto them, Fear not, for it shall go well with you. Praise, praise God, therefore. Basically, they like had an anxiety attack when they realized that this stranger was not a human at all, but an angel that had been watching over them. For not any favor of mine, but the will of our God, I came. Wherefore, praise him forever. All these days I did appear unto you, but I did neither eat nor drink, but ye did see a vision. Now therefore give God thanks, for I go up to him that sent me, but write all things which are done in a book. So he didn't, he's basically telling them, like, you saw me as the vision of a human being, but I never ate anything or drank anything. I didn't do the things that humans have to do. Because basically he was like a hologram of a human, as we would say in like modern language. He, he wasn't a human. He was just appearing before them as a human, as to not scare them. And I do believe angels do that a lot, so they don't scare us. 
And then they arose and they saw him no more. And they confessed the great and wonderful works of God and how the angel of the Lord had appeared unto them. So this brings us to chapter 13. Then Tobit wrote a prayer of rejoicing and said, Blessed be God that liveth forever, and blessed be his kingdom. For he doth scourge and hath mercy. He leadeth down to hell and bringeth up again. Neither is there any that can avoid his hand. Confess him before the Gentiles, ye children of Israel, for he hath scattered us among them. There declare his greatness and extol him before all living, for he is our Lord. He is the God of our Father forever. For he will scourge us for our iniquities, and he will have mercy again, and will gather us out of all nations, among whom he hath scattered us. If ye turn to him with your whole heart, and with your whole mind, and deal uprightly before him, then will he turn unto you, and will not hide his face from you. Therefore see what he will do with you, and confess with him with your whole heart, and praise the Lord of might, and extol the everlasting King in the land of my captivity. Do I praise him and declare his might and majesty to a sinful nation? O ye sinners, turn and do justice before him. Who can tell if he will accept you and have mercy on you? I will extol my God, and my soul shall praise the King of heaven and shall rejoice in his greatness. Let all men speak, and let all praise him for his righteousness. O Jerusalem, the holy city, he will scourge thee for thy children's works, and will have mercy again on the sons of the righteous. Give praise to the Lord, for he is good, and praise the everlasting King, and his tabernacles may be built in thee again with joy, and let him make joyful there and thee those that are captives, and love in thee forever that there are any miserable. Many nations shall come from far to the name of the Lord God with gifts in their hands, even gifts to the King of heaven. All generations shall praise thee with great joy. Cursed are all they which hate thee, and blessed shall all be which love thee forever. Rejoice and be glad for the children of the just, for they shall be gathered together and shall bless the Lord of the just. O oh, blessed are they which love thee, for they shall rejoice in thy peace. Blessed are they which have been sorrowful, all for thy scourges, for they shall rejoice for thee. When they have seen all thy glory, and shall be glad forever. Let my soul bless God the great King, for Jerusalem shall be built with sapphires and emeralds and precious stones, thy walls and towers and battlements with pure gold. And the streets of Jerusalem shall be paved with beryl and carbonate and stones of Ophir. And all her streets shall say, Alleluia, and they shall praise him, saying, Blessed be God, which hath exalt forever. And this brings us to chapter 14, which I believe is the last chapter of the book. So Tobit made an end of praising God, and he was eight and fifty years old when he lost his sight, which was restored to him after eight years. And he gave alms, and he increased in the fear of the Lord and praised him. So he was fifty-eight years old when he went blind, and that blindness lasted for eight years. So that was, he was sixty-six when he got his sight back, when he got his sight back. But I believe that, and I could be wrong, I'll have to double check this, but I believe the 6-6 six, six number, which we always think the sixes together is, is a bad number, but I believe in the good gematria, it just means human. He became human again. And when he was very aged, he called his son and the sons of his son and said to him, My son, take thy children, for behold, I am aged, and I am ready to part out of this life. Go into media, my son, for I surely believe those things which Jonas the prophet spake in Nineveh, and I shall, that it shall be overthrown, and that for a time peace shall rather be in media, and that our brethren shall lie scattered in the earth from the good land, and Jerusalem shall be desolate, and the house of God in it shall be burned and shall be desolate for a time. And that again, God will have mercy on them and bring them again into the land where they shall build a temple, but not like the first one, until the time of that age be fulfilled. And afterward, they shall return from all the places of their captivity and build up Jerusalem gloriously. And the house of God shall be built in it forever with glorious buildings as the prophets have spoken thereof. And all nations shall turn, and the fear the God, Lord, truly, and shall bury their idols. For shall all nations praise the Lord, and his people shall confess God, and the Lord shall exalt his people, and all those which love the Lord God in truth and in justice shall rejoice, showing mercy to our brethren. And now, my son, depart out of Nineveh. 
because that those things which the prophet Jonah spoke shall surely come to pass. But keep thou the law and the commandments, and show thyself merciful and just, that it may go well with thee. And bury me decently, and thy mother with me, but tarry no longer at Nineveh. Remember, my son, how Ammon handled Archelaus that brought him up, and how out of the light he brought him into darkness, and how he rewarded him yet again, yet Archelaus was saved, but the other had his reward, so he went down into darkness. Manasses gave alms and escaped the snares of death which they set for him, but Ammon fell into the snare and perished. Wherefore now, my son, consider what alms doeth and how righteousness doeth deliver. And when he had said these things, he gave up the ghost in the bed, being a hundred and eight and fifty years old. He buried him honorable. So Tobit lived to be a hundred and fifty-eight years old, which is super interesting because I've been doing some work on the side with some other people that are um, doing some deep dives into this biblical stuff. And, and I think that there's definitely going to be some um, information that our age, we know from Jubilees, it talked about in Jubilees how we live these long lives, but our lives were shortened over time. And as we come into the age of Aquarius, our lives are going to be lengthened again. Well, apparently the shortening of the lives is a more recent thing. Some of these biblical characters actually lived longer than we think they lived. So that, that makes sense to me hearing Tobi, Tobit or to, yeah, Tobit lived 158 years old. That, that makes sense. That kind of validates some other research that we've been doing. So just an interesting side note. And when Anna, his mother, was dead, he buried her with his father, but Tobias departed with his wife and children to Ekbatang, to Ragul, his father-in-law, where he became old with honor, and he buried his father and his mother-in-law honorably, and he inherited their substance and his father Tobit. And he died in Ekbatang in Media, being a hundred and seven and twenty years, so he was a hundred twenty-seven years old. But before he died, he heard of the destruction of Nineveh, which was taken by Nebuchadnezzar and Assyrius, and before his death, he rejoiced over Nineveh. So that ends the book of Tobias, guys. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. I think the next book that we're going to be reading is The Ascension of Isaiah. I'm pretty sure that's the next book we're going to be reading, but if something changes and there's another work we need to look at first, I will let you guys know in the community tab just so you know where we're going next. Um, I find that very fascinating. So we know, again, we have validation that people lived long lives even up into the 8th century BC. And we also now have confirmation again of the seven archangels of God. So um, interesting, right? All right, guys. Thank you to Josh McKay for doing our music. If you would like to purchase the opening song, there is a link down in the description box below. And thank you again to Todd Broderick for helping me get this video out to you all today. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will talk to you soon. Bye.